This is a podcast on how to incorporate the use of graphic organizers into mathematics classrooms, two things that often haven't gone together. A graphic organizer is a tool that can be used to help group um, and give structure to student um, work. They organize, and they're often used in humanities classes to um, group together concepts to help with brainstorming. They can be used um, in order to structure ideas, so this is a decent example of that where a student thinks of a main topic, let's say in social studies, and then they have a bunch of categories that add on to that. In science, they're sometimes used to help structure lab work, or they can be used to categorize different families of animals or different objects. Um, in math, though, we, we have several other uses that we can use. And the benefit of a graphic organizer is that they can help students grasp core co course content in a more concrete way, and they can um, build connections between different categories that maybe wouldn't have had connections drawn between them. So in mathematics, um, firstly, we, we can use graphic organizers as a way to help with um, understanding what, what fits within a category. So in this example, we use integers. A, a, it's a, one of the families of numbers. Uh, so within integers, maybe we were at the end of the unit and students are trying to think of what integers are, what natural numbers, what rational numbers, what all these different things are. So when we're talking about integers, we say, what are examples of integers? And some students will say zero, someone will say four, someone will say negative 11. These are all examples of integers. And then we'll say, well, what are not examples? And students will be thinking, oh, this, what doesn't fit with they'll say, well, negative one-half is not an example. And they'll say, uh, maybe pi. And they'll say 1.2. All these things that aren't whole numbers. So then we're able to go a little bit more abstract and say, well, what defines an integer? Why are these not examples and these are examples? And they can say, well, it's obviously positive or negative numbers. Um, they're whole numbers. And then there'd be all these other things that we can add in into integers that they go all the way from negative infinity to infinity and all these different uh, characteristics. And then they say, what are non-critical -ca ca characteristics? Things that we may know about them, but things that aren't essential to know. So a student may say, well, natural numbers goes within. So natural is inside integer. And so on and so forth. Anyways, this is a fairly helpful method for students to, to uh, how would I say that? To bring all their information together that they've, that they've thought of before. It helps them to, um, to see this for the whole concept it is, rather than just a bunch of broken up pieces. Now I'll just go on to my next example quickly. Uh, anyways, graphic organizers can also be used as a way to help with computations and helping students to understand um, how they can calculate things. So often, this could be used in adding whole numbers or in long division. This example is a way to help with large multiplications. So what's happening here is that they're multiplying 2314 by 157. And this looks complicated at first uh, glance, but all they're doing is the same thing as students would be doing anyways. So they're multiplying 7 times 4 is 28. Normally when they're doing big multiplication like this, they would put the 8 down below, they'd throw the 2 in above the next number, the big issue that happens when students are doing multiplication is they don't remember where things go and which place value goes with which place value. This is especially a problem when students get a decimal added in. So let's say we're multiplying 23.14 times 15.7, and they wonder, well, I know there's a decimal at some point, and I know it's probably somewhere in the middle, but I don't know where it goes. What's helpful here is that students, as they go through this model, are able to just say, well, the decimal's here, the decimal's here, so that meets there and carries to here. So I know on this number the decimal goes here. And then I know that because of all these multiplications I've done, what is happening here is that these are the tens values for this and this is the ones values for this. Here this is the tens, this is the one hundreds, and so on and so forth. But it, it carries across diagonally because as you're doing division, usually you would have uh, your first number, so let's say it ended up to 136. So your next one you'd put in a zero or a placeholder and you get something else and then more placeholders, and more placeholders, and awkwardness. Here all they're doing is they're multiplying diagonal, or adding diagonally. So they see that we have, in, in the tens group, we have zero plus two plus seven, that's nine. Here we have four plus two plus five plus zero plus one. Well, that's 12, so we're gonna add a one up to here, and the two goes here, and so on and so forth. 
until they have their final answer of 363.298, which is what we wanted them to get to, but in a fairly accessible way. Um, so I think this is a very helpful way for students with specific, specifically with multiplication. Um, a lot of my friends still have struggled with this and understanding where you put which numbers. So this is an easy way to access it. Um, and these ideas are not my own. Um, I, I took mainly these math ideas from my math uh, curriculum content class, which is uh, ED337. But then these, also these references online have been helpful. Thank you very much.